In this lesson, we're going to look at the um, exponential growth and decay models. So an exponential function is always in the same form. We could either write it as y equals b to the power x, where b is the base, or the common ratio. And oftentimes you'll see it as y equals a b to the power x, where b is the common ratio and a is the initial value. So that's your starting amount. So if the exponential model is growth, it's going to get bigger. So you'll see that we're going to add 1 to the common ratio, 1 representing 100%. So think about if you multiply a by 1, you get the starting amount plus interest or plus the rate. If it's exponential decay, we're going to subtract that rate from 1. So this is like the B. Um, in this example, they use an R. So A is the initial amount. R is the growth or decay rate, um, often just expressed as a percentage or a decimal, and X is the number of times. Graphically, an exponential growth curve will go up. It will be an increasing function because it's getting bigger and the exponential decay will go down. It's a decreasing function because it is getting smaller. So here's an example of an exponential growth. Because I see the word increase. So the population is given as 35,000 and it is increasing every year at a rate of 2%. So our model, our models are always the same, y equals a, b to the x. That's our always our initial model. So what does y represent? y represents the population, so I might put p. You don't have to, but you could sometimes use letters that represent what the situation is. a is the starting population, so that is giving as 30,000. It's increasing at 2%, so we're going to say it's 1 plus, so 2% as a decimal. If we divide by 100, it's 0 0.02. So it's 1 plus 0 0.02. Um, X number of times, we might use T for time. So if we simplify that, 1 plus 0 0.02 is 1.02 to the power T. B says how long will it take, or what is the population in three years? So we're just going to do P of 3. So we'll do 1.02 to the power 3. Remember with order of operations, we're going to do our power first, and then we will multiply by 35,000. And we have a population of 30,142.2, so we'll just round to the nearest person since it's population. In C it says, how long will it take to get to 46,000? So that's going to be my ending population. I'm starting with 35,000. The rate is 1.02, and this time we're looking for t. Now, we can't multiply the 35,000 by the 1.02 because the 1.02 has a t, or power, attached to it. So we're going to have to isolate for that base. Remember our um, lesson on solving exponential equations? We want one base on each side. So on this side, that will cancel. I'm going to divide 46,000 divided by 35,000, and that gives me a decimal of approximately 1.343. Now, I can't change this to the same base because it's not exact. I could estimate. Um, so let's just do an estimate, and then I'll show you another way to solve it. So my estimate is I want to figure out how many years. Well, 1.02 to the power 1 is 1.02. I can do to the power 5. Well, let's do 2. So we're going to go bigger. So we'll do 1.02 to the power 2 is 1.04. Well, that's way too small. So I'm going to jump to 5. Oops. So I'm going to try 1.02 to the power 5. 
that's 1.104. So let's jump to much bigger. Let's go to 15. So we want to have a good estimate. Looks like it might be a fairly large number. So that's 1.346, which is a bit too big. So I might try to the power of 13. So I want to get as close as possible. That's 1.2936. That's a little bit too small. So let's try 14. And that's 1.319. So that's a pretty good estimate. So I would say approximately 14 years. Okay, so that's an estimate using just trial and error, just taking the base, trying different exponents, and you want to end up with this number. The other way is to use logarithms. Um, so I'll show you a quick shortcut. So logarithms are the inverse of exponential functions. So remember when we talked about inverse functions, so a square and a square root are inverse operations. So if I want to undo a square, I can square root. If I want to undo a square root, I can square. So that's the same with logs. Logs are the inverse of exponential functions. They undo that exponential function. You have a log button on your calculator. So what I can do is I can log the answer and divided by log of the base that it currently is. This is called the change of base formula. So 1.3143 divided by a log. So I'm just using the log button on my calculator, which is log base 10. And my answer works out to be 13.8. Well, we approximated 14, so we're pretty close. So that is an, more of an exact answer, whereas the trial and error gives you a, an approximation. Okay, in, exa in this example, we have bacteria that doubles every five minutes. There's three to start. How many would you have in 25 minutes? So again, we're going to use the exponential model. The starting amount is three bacteria. The common ratio, well, it says it's doubling, so two. And I'm going to just use B for bacteria. So we're starting with three bacteria. It is doubling, but it is doubling every five minutes. So we have to take that into consideration because we can't just put X. The problem is that it doubles every five minutes. So let's say, for example, 15 minutes pass and it doubled every five minutes, it would double three times. So what we have to do is put time divided by the doubling period, the time it takes to double. Because both are going to determine how many times it doubles. So it doubles every five minutes. Then it wants to know how much bacteria would be 25. So T is 25. So that means it's going to double five times. 25. Let's change this to the example we have. So 25 divided by 5 means it's going to double five times. So 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Multiply that by 3. And we would have 96 bacteria. So sometimes you have to take into consideration if there's a doubling period or sometimes half-life. In this example, we have a car that cost 42 1,500, so that's my initial value. It is decreasing by 15%. Write an equation to model. So the value of the car, let's use V for value, it's 42,500. It's decreasing, so we're going to do 1 minus the interest or, or the percentage. So 15% as a decimal is 0.15, and that's going to be T times so we're going to use 0.85. 1 minus 0.15 is 0.85. That's my model. And then I want it for, well, how many years have passed? We bought the car in 2015. We are finding it in 2022. So how many years have passed? Seven years. So it's going to be to the power of seven. And then we'll just type that into the calculator. 
So we'll do 0.85 to the power of 7. We'll multiply that by 42,500. So now the car is worth $13,624.53.